Number 15. It's a Small World What's the single most disliked Disneyland ride that you would never want to get stuck on? Ding ding ding, if you said it's a small world, then you are a winner. Imagine that song playing over and over again while maintenance work to get the attraction back up and running. Just thinking about it makes me feel like I'm going insane. Well, one guest doesn't have to use his imagination. That's exactly what happened to him in 2009. The guest suffered from quadriplegia, and when the ride broke down, he was stranded in the goodbye room without any means of escape. Listening to that song over and over and over again for more than 30 minutes, it's literally what nightmares are made of. The man was finally freed and was awarded $8,000 for his suffering. Seems a small price to play for forcing that song upon someone on repeat. Number 14. The Matterhorn In 1984, 48-year-old Regina Young was on the Matterhorn when she fell from the ride seat and collided with an oncoming coaster car. She passed away on the impact. After the incident, the woman's seatbelt was in fact discovered to be unfastened. Although it's not clear if this was due to the staff or if Young managed to unfasten the belt herself, the roller coaster has an otherwise stellar safety record, according to Disneyland spokesperson Bob Roth, carrying 5 million passengers each year with little to no injuries. Regardless of the case's outcome, the details of the events are hard to stomach. Certainly, those who witnessed the incident will always remember. Number 13. The Confrontation Some of these stories come straight from current and former cast members who like to share their experiences at arguably the world's most famous theme park. Redditor Atheist Peace is one of them. He shared his experience as a jungle cruise skipper, writing, Lots of crazy things happen in the jungle. Among those crazy things are swarms of bees requiring boats to redock, or guests falling into the water. But the main event described by this cast member is not one that he was there for but one he heard about from other crew members. Loaded with guests, the boat entered the jungle. All was well until halfway through the trip, a Korean woman started screaming in Korean at the man sitting in front of her. The skipper stepped in, trying to calm the situation, but the woman didn't calm down. Instead, she lunged at the man's face with her long nails. The man tried to defend himself against her blows without retaliating and the skipper took action, firing off a four-shot. This is four rounds all fired off to alert boats in the area to an incident, as well as those on the dock. Once docked, the security and medical teams arrived shortly, while many passengers helped hold the woman back. Security managed to subdue her, strap her to a gurney, and take her to an ambulance behind Tomorrowland. So what was the deal? What did the poor guy do to offend this woman? As it turns out, nothing. It turns out that the lady was mentally ill, and in the Redditor's own words, had decided that she wasn't taking her medication that day, so she could try to better enjoy the park. She just happened to have an episode in the middle of the jungle, and the poor dude sitting in front of her got all the wrath. A reminder to those headed to Disneyland, even if you want to enjoy your day in the wonderful world of Disney, you still need to take your meds. Number 12. Yippies Tom Sawyer Island in Disneyland has both served as an artificial island with throwbacks to Mark Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and as the stomping grounds for activism. In the 1970s, the island was a focal point of a hippie invasion. Well, they didn't call themselves hippies, but yippies or members of the Young International Party. On August 6, 1970, somewhere around 300 members of the party decided that Disneyland was the ultimate place for protesting. And so they did, before taking to the streets of Main Street, USA, singing Mickey Mouse Club ironically, and ribbing the park's marching band. Instead of just kicking out the protesters or ignoring them, Disney called in the authorities, the riot police were called in to take on the yippies, and the ensuing battle got dark. One eyewitness reported a young woman with her head split open. 
This was one of the first and only times in the park's history that the place was shut down early and the Yippie movement faded out, never to be seen or heard from again. Number 11. America Sings More scary events awaits in the ride America Sings. Debbie Stone was a cast member at Disneyland in 1974. A young woman and star athlete who just graduated with honors from high school. She decided to work at Disneyland for the summer to save up for college. She was just hired for the opening crew of the America Sings ride. She'd also just gotten engaged to her high school sweetheart. The America Sings attraction was built of a ring of six theaters, each of which rotated around a middle fixed stage, holding several different scenes. At the beginning of the ride from the left of the stage, the ride's hostess would welcome guests, and once the scene rotation was complete would see them off. A full rotation would last 24 minutes, after which the stage would reposition itself for a new cycle. This repositioning took only 45 seconds. While this was happening, Debbie found herself between the stationary stage wall and the moving theater wall. She couldn't escape in time and was crushed. Whether she fell or had attempted to jump between stages, no one knows. What we do know is that the ride had only been open for a little more than a week when this happened. Most Disneyland passings are caused by recklessness on behalf of those involved. Though still horrible, the worst thing about Debbie Stone's passing is that she wasn't being reckless. She's also the only cast member to have passed away at Disneyland. America Sings closed in 1989. That was probably for the best. Number 10. The Ghost of Disney Sounds like Disneyland has had enough ghost stories to haunt the place for eternity. But who knew the theme park might be haunted by Walt Disney himself? Rumors have been long floating around amongst cast members that the spirit of good old Walt still floods the park, and not just figuratively. Some say that a light in the Mastermind's Main Street apartment would often turn on by itself. Others say they heard a voice whisper, I am still here. Whatever you believe, Disney cast members agree that it was too chilling to ignore. So they leave a light on in Walt's empty apartment to commemorate the man and the legend, and so that the ghost of Disney can stay up all night. Number 9. Abandoned This entry is a very personal story, shared by Sparkle Horses on Reddit. When in middle school, the Redditor was invited on a family and friends trip to the Animal Kingdom. The boy had given the Redditor her ticket the week prior and had suggested that this would be their first date. The day of, the girl was chauffeured by her mother to the park, who then left her with the boy and his parents once they had arrived. When her mom left, the boy pulled the girl out of sight of his mom and dad and said he wanted his ticket back because he'd replaced the girl with someone else. He then gave her ticket to another girl who was standing by and told his parents the Redditor had left with her mom because she was scared to ride the roller coasters. Crying and without a cell phone, in Sparkle Horsey's own words, I remember being terrified and really sad. I ended up having to ask a lady at the ticket counter for a phone and a Disney security officer waited with me until my mom came back. Of course, the story didn't end there. The girl's mom called the boy's parents that night and gave them the what for. The boy thankfully didn't get away with it. He was grounded for six months. Unfortunately though, that caused him to be mean to the girl for the rest of their days. What a catch. Number 8. Tom Sawyer Island Remember the Yippie Invasion? Well, Tom Sawyer Island was not only the scene of a protest, it was also the scene of a terrible event in June of 1973. It was then that 18-year-old Bogdan Delaro attempted to swim across the rivers of America and passed away in the process. Bogdan and his 10-year-old brother had scaled the fence dividing the island from the settler's cabin in the hopes to stay in Disneyland overnight, and they did manage to be overlooked after the park closed. Hours later, they wanted to escape the island probably to explore the theme park while it was empty. So as to avoid cast members who might be on the overnight crew, they started to swim across the river instead of asking for help off the island. The problem, the 10-year-old couldn't swim. 
Bogdan attempted to carry the boy on his back but didn't make it. Halfway across the rivers of America, he went underwater. By doggy paddling, the 10-year-old managed to keep afloat and was saved by a ride operator. They searched but couldn't find Bogdan that night. He was discovered the next morning. Truly a terrible event. Disneyland After Dark is perhaps the most haunting of all. Number 7. The Monorail Train Passings at Disneyland are rare, but when they happen, they're just horrible. This is one of the first passings at the park. In 1966, 19-year-old Thomas Cleveland tried to sneak into Disneyland. His plan, climb the 16-foot tall fence, walk along the monorail track, and once inside, climb down. It was grad night when he made his attempt. He climbed up to the monorail track. A train was fast approaching. A security guard yelled at Cleveland from below, warning him of the oncoming train. At first, Cleveland ignored his warning, and when he finally listened and attempted to descend onto the fiberglass canopy below the track, there was unfortunately not enough space. The train collided with him, and he was dragged along the track. Everyone's worst nightmare come true, all in the happiest place on earth. Number 6. The Woman in White The so-called Woman in White haunts many a place the world over, from Brazil to Estonia to the Philippines. You can't get away from her, and Disneyland is no exception. Some have said the park's resident in waiting is a friendly ghost. She's taken it upon herself to guide lost children in the afterlife. When she comes across an abandoned child in the park, the woman in white takes the child by the hand and leads them to guest services so that parents can find them. Hmm. Disneyland's ghost sounds more like a Disney princess to me. Number 5. Outbreak In 2014, there was an outbreak that ended in 133 cases of measles, 127 of which were traced back to the theme park. The outbreak is said to have originated in the theme park itself, with 40 visitors contracting it between December 17th to 20th, 2014. Although patient zero was not identified, a likely profile of said patient suggests that the guest was an international traveler. Just one more thing to worry about when trying to have a good time at a theme park. Number 4. Grad Night If you don't live in the area of Disneyland, then you've probably never heard of Disney Grad Night. The event allows high school grads a celebratory night in the place where dreams are made of, before they set out into the real world to make their dreams come true. Needless to say, Disney Grad Nights get pretty wild, and they may just be cursed. In June of 1980, a high school graduate from San Diego was attending grad night when he started to climb from car to car on the People Mover. If you've never been to Disneyland, the People Mover is a transport system which gives guests a view of Tomorrowland from elevated tracks. Gerardo Gonzalez was following in the footsteps of a former Disney guest who had done the same sort of stunt 13 years prior and sadly with the same result. In the early hours of the morning, when Gonzalez was making his transition between cars, as the people mover approached the super speed tunnel, Gonzalez lost his footing and fell onto the track, directly in the path of an oncoming train, which ended up dragging the poor kid, much like Thomas Cleveland on the monorail track. Three years later, on another grad night in June, 18-year-old Philip Strogan celebrated both his 18th birthday and high school graduation snuck into the cast members only area of the park next to the rivers of America. He and his friend had been drinking a lot and the pair grabbed an inflatable rubber maintenance motorboat and disembarked on the river. Neither of the boys knew how to captain a boat and as they approached Tom Sawyer Island, they hit a rock. Strogan fell into the river while his friend returned to the dock to find his friend some help. Unfortunately, help arrived too late. Strogan passed away in the rivers of America such sad and scary events, one after the other, right before life really began for these boys. May they rest in peace. Number 3. Roller Coaster Roller coasters travel up to 55 miles per hour. People are bound to get hurt every once in a while. But something you might not expect is losing a body part. That's what happened to a 5-year-old boy on Big Coaster Mountain Railroad in 1998. When the roller coaster paused temporarily, 
The boy stepped out of the vehicle, managing to get his foot stuck between the edge of the platform and the train's running board. His left foot was seriously harmed, requiring the removal of all his toes and requiring changes from Disneyland to make the ride safer, which they did. Let's hope such a thing never happens again. Number 2. Haunted Mansion They don't call it that for nothing. There are rumors that the mansion is actually haunted by real living ghosts. Real passed away ones, I mean. This entry has several layers, as there are a number of ghost stories involving the haunted mansion. Ghost story number one. Way back when the mansion was being constructed in the 1960s, one of the ride's sound engineers heard faint music seemingly emanating from behind a wall. While he was working in the seance room, at first he thought nothing of it, probably just a radio he told himself, but the music kept going and unlike radio shows, no commercial breaks interrupted it. The faint music lasted for days and was so irritating and eerie that the engineer placed a speaker against the wall to muffle the sound. Who or what was playing it? Ghost story number two. Again in the seance room, one former Disney employee heard that the spell book in the room's seance circle was the real deal. That means a spell was being cast every time. Madame Leota recited it to her audience. Why was this rumor going around? Well, because the book kept moving all on its own. Cast members would arrive in the morning expecting the book to be in its place in the seance circle. But when they got there, it was always somewhere else. Who or what was moving it? Ghost story number three. A woman whose son had passed away entered the haunted mansion and started sprinkling her son's ashes there. That was his last wish to haunt the haunted mansion in Disneyland. Although cast members caught her and told her off, she somehow snuck back on the ride to covertly fulfill her son's wish. After the deed was done, many reported seeing a crying boy ghost near the haunted mansion's exit. Scary, right? Believe it or not, this one actually seems the most likely to be true. The Wall Street Journal reported in 2018 that Disney Parks custodians confirmed that this was a common resting place for dearly departed ashes. Folks scattered them there all the time, so much that maintenance code-worded it as an HEPA cleanup, a reference to the air filtration system that lifts fine dust particles. And one of the most popular spots to scatter, the haunted mansion probably has so much human ashes in it that it's not even funny, one custodian told the Wall Street Journal. Not funny at all and also pretty disgusting. Ghost story number four. One Redditor, Stormageddon, told of his experience working the Haunted Mansion attraction. He said that one of the expanding rooms was rumored to be haunted. Sometimes the audio would play low and creepy or even backwards. Moreover, when they closed the attraction every night, three people or more would be working, with two picking up trash along the tracks and doing maintenance. While well, one stayed up in the tower, keeping an eye on the cameras and finishing up the end of the day paperwork. According to Stormageddon, sometimes those in the tower would look down towards the track and see three shadows, though only two people were there. And then there was the legend of a little boy ghost named Timmy. Timmy had red hair and a blue baseball cap, and he ran around the mansion late at night. Of course, every place has its ghost stories, and sure, myths and legends should be taken with a grain of salt. But what happens when you actually experience something paranormal? In Stormageddon's own words, at the base hiding behind the trash can was a little boy with a blue baseball cap crouching, like little kids do when they think they're totally hiding, but super obviously visible. While the Redditor admits that the kid probably wasn't the infamous ghost Timmy, he did find it super coincidental that a boy fitting the exact description of this legendary ghost was playing hide and seek with them and not a parent in sight. Perhaps it was Timmy, and perhaps his wish was to have his ashes scattered in Haunted Mansion came true. Before we get to number one, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you're curious about what I look like in real life, then go to my Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT and tap that follow button to find out. It's a proven fact that generosity makes you a happier person, so if you're generous enough to hit that subscribe button and the bell beside it, then thank you. This way, you'll be notified of the new video we upload every Tuesday. 
Number one, Christmas Eve. Scary events struck on December 24th of 1998 when a rope that tied the Columbia sailing ship to the docks of the Rivers of America broke from the metal cleat attached to it. The cleat flew at two gas, getting ready to board the Columbia, while a Disney cast member stood alongside them, with metal raining down on them. And two days later, 33-year-old Lun Fien Dawson passed away after his life support was disconnected. Unlike all other events on this list, this was the first in the park's history that was not partially attributed to guest negligence. Instead, it was found that the ride's maintenance was insufficient and the supervisor on duty was not sufficiently experienced to play an operating role for the attraction. This particular incident resulted in a call for increased government oversight in the operations and safety procedures of theme parks. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because we upload new countdowns every Tuesday and Saturday. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of our other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy!